You're fine, right? Do you hear me well? Is it clear? Okay, so today we will talk about microservice monitoring in, in general and uh, in the context of microservices, basically. Uh, we work in TransferWise. Our mission basically is to um, make transfer, make money transfer across border as convenient as possible and uh, fast and uh, fair and transparent and eventually free uh, for customers. Uh, customers basically it's in the main focus for our business. We try to make sure that he has the best uh, experience he wa he, while he transfers the money and uh, we make sure that everything is transparent and fair for him. Uh, my name is Dwayne Mohammed. I'm a software engineer in TransferWise. And uh, my name is Vladimir. I'm uh, also uh, uh, engineer in TransferWise. Okay. Uh, sorry. The agenda today will be uh, basically we will talk a little bit about the what is monitoring in general, what's the domain we are talking about, uh, the problem we are trying to solve. And then we will talk about the uh, three main pillars for my monitoring, which is logging, tracing, and metrics. Uh, anyone know which, what is microservices is from the audience? There will be prizes, by the way. A lot of servers. OK. <laughs> A lot of servers. Why not having okay, one? Asynchronously. Uh, cool. It, it could work either way, synchronous or asynchronous. It depends on your name, basically. But why we split a lot of servers? You don't want just one server, so they don't. So it's distributed. So they must do it. Okay, uh, I will iterate a little bit about the uh, descriptions. Anyone have any other idea? Okay, so in it's like multiple like devices, computers, like doing a little bit of. For, for a little bit of money. Okay, uh, good enough. The uh, question is, why do people insist on using those? Why yeah, do uh, use one single server? Let's, uh, we will like try to give a quick description about it because it's not the main objective like uh, for the, the, the talk. But uh, back in the days, like there, there was one application, big application we called Monolith, which is basically one deployment uh, that do all of the things like you want, basically your business. But that will be like if you need to change any feature in this big application, you have to redeploy basically the whole chunk and uh, you might be even like uh, basically uh, interrupt some other use cases. Uh, the way to, to solve it is basically to dissolve this monotic to uh, small, small services based on the context. Uh, and then uh, this serv every service will do one job but it will do it very, uh, I would say, in a better way. And if you need to change anything in any service, it will be like uh, in work in isolation. You can redeploy it without any affection uh, to the other service. So it, it will provide you, basically, we can say that the microservice is like uh, in deployment uh, perspe like perspective, you gain a lot because you have some kind of isolations. And uh, so this is basically that chart, like how previously ha was like this one application. Now it's like more uh, kind of a coordination between multiple services. And now we will talk about the monitoring. What's monitoring about and uh, why we are so like it's very interesting monitoring. Like monitoring is, very, is the main, I would say is very, in, uh, uh, it's one of the main things that you will need to think about when you deploy application because it's the only way to understand how your application is working and how it's behaving like to some uh, actions or like customer loads. Uh, basically, actually, it's without monitoring, you cannot tell if, 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 you, if your application is even working or not. But the way you approach the monitoring, it can be classified into three pillars, uh, which is we'll talk about like, but the, regardless of the, the approach or the, you, 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 are, you address the monitoring, it's like it's all about Something happened to your application, and you want to know about it. This, this, like this event happens. What are the uh, characteristic or the environment or the context that uh, identify this event? So it's all about events. Uh, but the way you are react on this event is a little bit different. So the first, let's take an example. Uh, if you, I provide a service that will, let's say, uh, present you a rate, an exchange rate for 
multiple currencies, like from source currency to target currency, you provide the rates. Uh, so if I call this service, this is basically something happened to the system, the request come to the system, then you need to react on this. The first approach is just like uh, logging. It's basically say, hey, at this time of uh, day, I received this request and it took, let's say, 100 milliseconds. So this is the approach of logging, basically. The second approach is like this 100 milliseconds, like uh, why it took like 100 milliseconds? <coughs> it could be like uh, the request go to the database or like ask some Reuters f to get uh, the mid market aid or stuff like this. So there's some exter coordination between multiple services until you reach, get this results. So the questions like why it took 100 milliseconds is it's, uh, approached or addressed by the tracing. The third approach, the third category classification or pillars is like basically, was this 100 millisecond fast or slow? Or how fast was this request during this time of period, like day? So this is what we do metrics basically for. So if you want to address like draw diagrams, you will have main uh, the metrics, tracing, and logging. <coughs> uh, we'll start with the first one, which is, the, I would say, the most uh, basic one, and it's the, the easiest one, basically. It's logging. The first task in logging is basically generate these logs. So basically instrumentation for these logs. In Java world, you have uh, one ABI, and it's called SL, SL4J, but it has multiple implementation. You can make your poison, basically, and uh, it's very simple in code, just like uh, whenever you want to uh, ex like send or like ex send some information, you just say, hey, uh, log info, whatever you want, like with uh, the context, like the information you need. You need uh, it could be also a little bit different in style, but it's not very interesting. The main thing that you need to think about is first, uh, what are the log level? We have multiple log levels. Basically, the uh, let's say from the errors, you just uh, logging basically the errors, showing the errors. We have the warning, we have the info, we have the tracing and debug. So, what kind of information or the volume of information you want, you can switch this logs this level to to get to see more informations. Uh, you need also to think about the pattern, uh, how the format with the logging will be look like, because in if, if you have one service, like it's fine, you can put whatever patterns, it's fine. But if you have multiple services and every service is basically owned by different team, if, if everyone comes with different pattern, then it will be basically a mess, especially if you want to analyze them later. So, uh, you have also make sure, you need to make sure also you don't expose personal information like username, password, stuff like this in the logs. This is very uh, 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 important. Uh, logs normally it would be like just like uh, this is one pattern which is exposed like the couple of like the levels, the timing stamp, the threads, stuff like this. It would look like this in normal logs, but nowadays it's more uh, going to the JSON structured logs, which is basically the same informations but it's in more uh, structured way. After you generate the logs, the second uh, thing that the application need to uh, decide where to send these logs. So one option would be like sending it to files or standard output or even syslog over the networks. Uh, the application send it there, but you need someone, if you have multiple services, every, every service will send to different files, you need some something basically to collect all these informations, which is, we call the collector or transport, which uh, we have multiple uh, framework like uh, FluentD or Logstash, and once they collect the information, they do some transformations, they do some filtering, and then they store it in uh, some data stored like Elasticsearch. After that, you, after the Elasticsearch storing it, you attach some UI in it. For instance, we have Kibana, and hence the uh, name EL key, or basically the, f the stack to handle logs. <coughs> Any question? Or we can save it for the last, maybe. The second pillar is basically the tracings. Uh, as I said, like when you receive a request, uh, the, the, the question like you are, and it took like say 100 milliseconds. You need to understand why it took 100 milliseconds or something like this. Let's suppose that this service uh, like call multiple service in order to get the final results. So uh, basically 
the tracing will allow you to understand the journey of your request within your system basically uh, for each hop uh, each hop will basically will create a span will identify by ID, an id and it will set for instance the durations for each spans the collection of the spans will call we call it trace basically if let's say if this is like 30 milliseconds, this 20 or 50 the, the total will be 100 so it will allow you to understand what's why this where this 100 milliseconds spent it will also allow you um, give you some understanding of the architecture as well because you will see how the flow the request is going through your systems uh, mostly uh, the frameworks that currently is like comments like mostly is based on google uh, Dabber paper uh, we have Jaeger, which is implemented originally by uber zipkin by twitter and spring cloud slows which is mostly based on zipkin as well uh, I will talk a little bit on just Jagger, how what are the components. Uh, just in general, it's, this is like from their uh, site. So, in your application, you need two instruments. Basically, you do some basically the same concept in login. You need to generate something to add some information or metadata. You will use something called Jagger um, clients, which is basically depends on your language. Uh, like if you are in, um, in your language of implementation, it's, it could be Java, Go, or uh, whatever uh, <coughs> so this uh, client will send all the tracing informations to some network agent uh, network daemons basically called uh, Jagger agents which will uh, basically send it back to the collectors uh, and the collector will do some transformation and indexing before storing it in the database uh, uh, data store like Cassandra uh, the data store will be uh, then can be viewed like you can see how it's the the tracer or, uh, or the span or whatever like you can see it in some ui the one thing that you need to m think about in tracing is what we ca you cannot trace all the requests because it's really it will be like high volume and it will too much expensive uh, you have to uh, basically you have to uh, deploy a lot of log collectors and stuff to to handle if you want to trace everything. So what you need basically is to, to just do some sampling on the request, and based on that, you you can understand what's how this your system is behaving. And the third part is like the third pillars we call metrics. And the metrics is more about the trend of the behavior. Like uh, uh, as I said, like when this request took 100 milliseconds, the question you could ask someone we ask you was is it like fast enough is it slow or what why like how it's compared to other uh, requests in the same time that's how the metrics this is metrics basically the metric the, or the problem that metrics solves uh, it's also basically all the same you have um, you do instrumentation basically or generating to some metrics uh, what we call we will see it later on the, when we talked about premises but uh, in general you have like services emitting some metrics which is collected by some uh, server and then it will be stored in something in data store called time series database which is basically uh, attach every value with timestamps and some tags as well and uh, you can uh, use some dashboard to understand or build chart based on these metrics you have and you can also have some alert engines which is basically process or uh, evaluate some rules to see if there's something wrong or not uh, plus beside those three pillars the main pillars there's uh, basic questions you need also need always to think about is the health check uh, basically if you don't uh, you need to understand to answer the question is your application alive like is it working because if it's not working you, you will not be have you will not have logging you will not have tracing you will not have anything basically because all of these should be instrumented from within your application so this is the health check is about you you have to answer two questions basically is my application is alive which is you can implement by having endpoint called health check or health slash health should it should have no logic in it just like a simple rest endpoint and the second question is i am is your my application ready to receive a new requests which is we call liveness uh, normally you check uh, you provide a, an endpoint and within it you check what are the dependencies that your application is counting on for instance if 
if your application needs database, Kafka, or whatever, you need to make sure that all these are ready before you say, hey, please send me some request. Uh, one, one other approach is to just like to register your applications in some uh, uh, service discovery like Eureka or other stuff. So far we presented like three type of monitorings. So when you use what basically, or uh, if you look on the how from the most basic one is the health check. Basically it can give you answers either yes or no. Basically my application is live or not, nothing else. The second uh, uh, things, uh, metrics, like it can give you some trending, like is, is it like, is my application going, decreasing performance or not? But it cannot give you the uh, reason why it's going. It's like, for instance, the performance is decreasing or not. The, the way you can uh, justify or like understand what's, how, what's the problem with the performance is to go to the, to, to maybe check some traces or even go the last resort for you is will be the logging, basically, where you can have all the information you need. Uh, this is basically setting the foundation for the monitoring pillars before we start with the specific case, which is premises. Any question? So I have one question. Um, has anyone uh, heard of Prometheus before? It's been a while since I graduated, so this, this technology wasn't even existing when I was in university. No? Anyone? Okay. Okay. I think we have plenty of time. So, um, as, um, as Lyle pointed out, um, sorry about that. Those are basically the, um, all the steps that um, anyone working on microservices will get through before uh, they can figure out a certain problem or if they want to uh, just um, um, figure out uh, what's the current state of the, uh, of the system. Um, health checks are obviously the most, um, are not so expensive. Uh, they're very easy to implement, but also they don't bring a lot of information. Your service could be uh, indicating that it's uh, alive. Um, on the other hand, logging is uh, something that is semi-automatable. It's not really very appropriate to use it um, in case you have um, like uh, three or uh, 400 services. Uh, this means a lot of instances that you need to aggregate information from. And it's kind of a problematic approach if you want to get an overview of the system. Uh, and for that, we have metrics, and we're going to talk a bit about them. So, um, metrics, logging, and traces um, are all uh, very, very broad topics. Uh, probably each and every one of them um, has uh, enough material for at least one presentation. So, in, uh, in, this, uh, in this presentation, we decided to talk about Prometheus uh, and uh, how we approach uh, metrics and monitoring uh, in, in TransferWise. Uh, so, I'm first going to start with um, uh, a basic concept that um, uh, is um, that, that is in uh, very relevant for for monitoring, and this is the concept of uh, push versus pull. Um, so, if you have like I don't know 100 or 500 services, uh, there's multiple ways for you to distribute data so that you can aggregate it later on. Um, one of the ways is that you have a centralized server and you make all the services um, start pushing data to this server. Uh, and this is the so-called, obviously, push uh, approach. The other approach is um, the pull approach, which is basically you have another server, but instead of sending information, you rely on the server to gather the information from all the microservices. So both approaches uh, have their uh, downsides and uh, benefits. Um, probably, at least for my opinion, the uh, pool approach is slightly better, at least for our cases, uh, because uh, it will allow you not to perform a denial of service attack over your monitoring system, which could be problematic because if your monitoring system is down, uh, you're basically out of luck. You don't know what's happening and you have to investigate first if monitoring is up, if it's working correctly, and then you can see if, if your business is actually uh, still functioning. Um, 
So having said that, Prometheus is actually um, a pool-based open source monitoring system. Um, it has been developed by uh, uh, SoundCloud, I think, and it's um, uh, alive in production since 2012. Um, so it's, it's a fairly established product, I would say. Um, what it does is, it, um, because it's pulling information, it's, re it's relying on the so-called scraping uh, mechanism, which is basically uh, gathering data from the servers. Uh, so it's, it's your obligation as a developer to expose a certain endpoint which is consumable by, uh, by the Prometheus server. Uh, and this is the so-called scrape protocol. Um, I can show you in a minute what it looks like. It's not really a protocol, it's more, well, you can, you can say it's a protocol, but it's more like a, a key value uh, representation of data. Um, I won't go into much details about the features of this product because there's quite a lot um, and uh, it can go very much in depth, but the ones that I like, uh, First of all, the server that, that I'm talking about, the Prometheus, is a time series database. Um, and uh, it's capable of uh, storing metrics uh, such as, well, there's three things that are being stored in the server. Uh, one is the metric name, which could be anything. Can be temperature, can be request count or something like this. Uh, a timestamp when this uh, metric was uh, scraped by a certain service and also a set of key values uh, which we call which are called labels but you can refer to them as tagging as well because they uh, serve the same concept the same concept um, one thing which is very interesting at least per my opinion is that it doesn't rely on distributed storages so it's really very easy to operate also you can run as many instances if, if, as you want and if one of them dies it's not really a problem um, also if you get duplicate data or um, duplicate alerts or something like this. Also, it's not really a problem because um, it's always better to have duplicate data in this domain rather than uh, no data at all, which could be the case if you have if you rely on uh, distributed storage. Um, it also supports a very flexible query language. Um, we'll see uh, a bit of it in a moment. Um, so this is the architecture. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much details, but I mentioned a few of the uh, um, characteristics already. The server is basically, uh, along with the UI, is basically uh, one running instance. It relies on local storage. It doesn't rely on any input-output operations, which makes it very fast and reliable. Um, there is also another component uh, which lives outside of the server, which is called Alert Manager. Um, We'll see how it works uh, in the demo. Um, its sole purpose is to um, trans translate any alerts coming uh, to it and distribute them to different systems, different channels, basically, if you look at those as channels. For example, this could be email, this could be um, Slack messages, uh, this could be pager duty, um, could be anything. Um, and. Uh, I mentioned that this is uh, the, the main approach of the system is that it finds servers and reads the information from them as opposed to uh, servers pushing them. But what happens if, uh, does anyone have an idea what happens if uh, there is like a short lived job which only lives like five seconds or so? What would happen if, if the server fails to uh, read the data for, from this job before it dies or completes correctly? Any ideas? Well, there's, I would say it's a, it's a workaround, but there is a way to resolve this problem. There's this service over here, uh, which acts as a, a, which is a, a, another component of the whole architecture uh, and is used if you want to push data uh, instead of uh, waiting for the server to scrape the data from your service. I, will, I, I tend to say it's a workaround because, in general, as I said, Prometheus is a, um, a pool-based uh, approach. Um, and this is a push gateway, so it's a bit contradicting. Uh, but, yeah, it's not that... Um, it's not, it's, it's not um, 
I wouldn't say it's a real-time data. Don't think of it like a, a system where you can stream data or something like this. It's more like you push data and then Prometheus once again uh, scrapes it from here. So think of it like a temporary storage where you store your data before it gets scraped anyway. Um, so there's um, four metric types. Um, first and easiest one is uh, counters. Uh, counters are very simple. They simply represent a single value, which can only go up. Um, it's uh, monotonically, monotonically increasing. And um, we mainly use them, or people mainly use them for uh, events such as, uh, I have given an example for uh, logging events. For, so for example, if your server is uh, spitting out errors, like this example here, you can see that this error, uh, the, the, the server generated 153 errors. This could be a useful information if you want to establish some um, um, alertings on that. And we'll see how this works in, in a minute. Um, it, could, it could also be used for counting users uh, and things like that. It can also be used for uh, counting the amount of data sent to someone or received. It can be used for a lot of things. Now, there's a, a little problem with this approach is that um, because the servers are not obligated to store the data, uh, these counters may reset, but Prometheus takes care of it because it remembers the last time. It scraped this, uh, it scraped the server, it remembers the last count. So it's kind of a uh, resolved issue. Um, second metric type is so-called gauges. Uh, they are again a single value, but uh, in this, in this case, they only go up and down. They can go down. Um, so the way people would use this normally is uh, to track uh, CPU usage, memory usage, um, JVM classes obviously loaded in, in, in memory. Uh, normally, they don't go down, but it depends on the, uh, on the JVM and uh, how it's implemented. So you can basically unload classes if you want to. Um, and that's what gauges are used for. Um, and there's two more types, which are slightly more complicated than the first two. So first one is histogram. I suppose it's uh, pretty self-explanatory, but um, the idea is that if you have, if you want to have, um, a dis if you want to track distribution of events, for example, um, I have an endpoint and I want to figure out how many of the requests took uh, one second or uh, 400 milliseconds and 200 milliseconds. Basically, you want to get an information on how data is being distributed. Uh, counters are not really useful for that. And this is why there is a histogram. Um, the way this works is that you create buckets and every time you do a new measurement, it gets stored in a bucket. But there is a catch because um, those values that you see are being accumulated. So for example, if you have a uh, request duration um, which, uh, which is uh, 800 milliseconds, it will get stored in, uh, in few of the counters, not only in this bucket, as you see here. Uh, and this would answer the question is, how many of the requests took 800 milliseconds? Uh, this would be those one, but in this bucket, those also took uh, 800 milliseconds, so it's fair to uh, duplicate uh, this, uh, this counter, and this is why you will see that with the increasing counter um, count of, uh, of each and every metric, uh, so does uh, the responding value uh, increase until it reaches uh, infinity. Um, and the fourth type uh, is called a summary, which is very similar. Um, the only difference is that, well, again, you have to um, sort of um, create buckets, in this, in this uh, case called uh, quantiles. Uh, but this time, those are not being, um, those are being, sorry, lost the word there. Um, those are being evaluated uh, on client side, which means that you can gain more accuracy if you want to, but um, providing metrics for your monitoring system will take a lot of your CPU power and possibly also memory. So you get accuracy, but you lose uh, some of your resources. So you have to be careful with that. Um, 
It can be used, for example, for things like uh, garbage collection durations. Uh, in this case, it's uh, go garbage collection durations, um, which is looks like pretty much the um, the histogram. Uh, and it's just that it's uh, evaluated on the server on the client side. Um, any questions so far? Not really. Okay, let's let's talk about something else then. Um, so the next tool, which uh, goes hand by hand usually with Prometheus uh, is called Grafana. It's also an open source product and its sole purpose is to visualize data. Um, people use it a lot because it can integrate with a lot of uh, data sources. As I said, well, obviously Prometheus is one of them, but uh, it can be also databases uh, such as InfluxDB or Elasticsearch. Uh, and Honestly, I haven't seen anyone use any, anything else uh, than Grafana, but I might be wrong, uh, so don't quote me. Oh, Graphite. Oh, Graphite is out of... Anyway. <laughs> um, Grafana is, um, provides basic alerting capabilities, which makes it very easy if you want to track some metrics uh, and get a notification if those are out of order. Um, but they're not as good as the one provided by Prometheus. Um, why? Because if you have a very fuzzy uh, diagram, you might get multiple notifications, which can be very tedious, especially if you're sleeping at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, whereas Prometheus is able to deduplicate those events and it will only wake you up once. I don't know if that's good or bad, but yeah. Um, it also has a dashboard market marketplace because um, the um, dashboards are not so easy to create. Well, it can be a tedious job. Uh, so there is a marketplace and it's very easy for everyone as a developer to contribute those uh, and to use uh, any predefined uh, dashboards. And of course, the best part of Grafana is those beautiful dashboards that my manager loves so much. Um, okay, let's do a little demo. Um, so for, for our demo, we have prepared a, a fairly simple use case, I would say, um, which involves uh, a, an application which is running on Kubernetes. Anyone knows what Kubernetes is? Okay, cool. That's great. Um, so it's running on Kubernetes, which is running on top of uh, Google Cloud. And uh, what we have is a ve very, very simple service. Um, I will actually show you the code. Uh, it's so mind-blowing. It's only 30 lines of code. Yeah, so what this code does is really very, very simple. Uh, basically, you have one users controller, which returns a list of users, which are not even random. It's uh, John Doe and J Doe, my friends. Everyone has his friends. Um, and we also have an errors controller. Um, this one will return a, a status 500 all the time. So. The reason we would use this is because we want to catch errors, right? It's a monitoring system. This is what we want to achieve. Um, so that's about the code. Um, just want to start something before. Okay, so first I want to show you what Prometheus looks like. Um, it has a very, very simple UI. Uh, but as I said, I don't know if I said it, but I'll say it anyway. Um, the purpose of Prometheus is to gather metrics. It's not to show them. For this, we have Grafana. Um, so in, in the UI of Prometheus, uh, what you can see is, uh, well, your configuration, which could be um, something that you might want to debug if you have any issues. Um, but you also have the targets. Uh, in this case, it's quite a few, but they could be a lot of targets. So those are all servers that we're currently scraping for metrics. Um, what else? We have an alert section. And in our case, we have only defined a two, two alerts, uh, which we will show how they work. Uh, one is... Um, that's basically uh, part of the uh, Prometheus uh, PromQL uh, um, query language. So what we're saying is that 
uh, for a metric named HTTP server request seconds count, uh, where status is equal to 500, which means uh, error, um, for a time range of one minute. If we get an increase, so this is a counter, uh, and the increase function, what it does is, uh, if it identifies that the, the counter has increased, it will basically um, indicate uh, some positive value. It, if it has increased with one, you'll get a one here. But if it has increased with 500, uh, you have obviously an increase of 500. Uh, we don't care how much it has increased. All we care is that if there is um, an error which is uh, of type 500, um, obviously a positive uh, uh, increase, uh, for an amount of 30 seconds, we will get an alert. And the second alert is, um, slightly more Kubernetes oriented, but if you have a deployment and this deployment has like uh, many replicas, but if we can, if you have replicas uh, less than one, meaning that there are no services basically running, uh, we'll get an alert. So that's about the UI um, of Prometheus. Um, and this is the uh, Grafana UI. Um, now, what we're exposing here is quite a lot of information, I would say. We have some quick facts about the uptime uh, when this was started. We have a lot of uh, information about the input-output operations. Um, we have a lot of information on JVM memory um, and what's not, memory pools, garbage collection cycles. Basically, everything that you want to know about your application, you can display it, uh, instrumented and then displayed in Grafana. But what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to involve the user's controller, which, as I said, just uh, returns a, uh, a bunch of um, uh, user names. And I'm just going to involve invoke this endpoint 100 times uh, and see how this will affect the rates. Now, as I mentioned, uh, Prometheus is not a real-time system, so it takes a little bit of time until those metrics get to, uh, uh, to Grafana, but not to worry about this. Yeah, it's this uh, chart that we're looking at, so we should get a peak because here we see that our little script is constantly calling the API. And you can see that the rate here is constantly increasing, which is our expectation. <coughs> Just see if I can refresh it faster. Nope. This is as fast as it can go. Yeah. And now if I stop it, and if we wait long enough, it will just go down. But I'm not going to wait for it. I'll uh, show it later on. Oh, it's already going down. Cool. Um, OK, so let's do the other part of the exercise. Um, instead of calling the user's endpoint, I'll just call the error's endpoint. It's not going to show a terrible screen. It's just going to tell that something terrible happened. Um, and what I'm going to do is start invo invoking this endpoint not as fast as I can. I'll just put a little sleep uh, as a real developer. And let's see what happens. OK. What happens here is that we see a peak in errors. Now, this is definitely something that we might want to know about, because if you see like a huge peak of errors coming, uh, coming to you, it's probably something wrong happening. It might need some manual intervention, might not. But yeah, usually there's multiple teams handling this. Uh, it very much depends on the organizational structure of the company. But usually there is like a first line defense of uh, operational teams which are looking at this, trying to figure it out by themselves. And if not, they call the developer and it's game over. Well, as a joke, of course. It's, you just have to uh, switch on your laptop. OK, um, but what I wanted to show you is now that we have alerts, you can see that this one is already yellow because, and it has a status of pending, which means that this condition that we have predefined here is now true. Um, 
and now we have to wait for 30 seconds until Prometheus decides that, okay, I have waited long enough. This is an error that I need to send alert. Um, okay, we waited long enough. Now you can see that the status is already firing. And if you go to Alert Manager, which is another UI, you will see that you can actually see that there is an alert named this one. And if you switch to, well, not this one. If you switch to our monitoring demo, you will see that here we get an alert notification. Now, is this useful enough? Well, probably it depends on how much you want to stress people. I mentioned that um, there are other systems. Slack is not the, the best one. If you have a very catastrophic error, uh, there's other systems like um, we use VictorOps for that. Um, there's also PagerDuty, which is, uh, you don't want to find about this, but you get a phone call uh, and you get a message from an automated voice. It's not even that personal. Yep. Um, so I'm going to stop this now. Oh, it's already completed. Um, now, if I go back to Grafana, you'll see that, okay, error, errors are gone. Um, and once again, if you wait long enough, you'll see that this alert will eventually uh, get inactive. Because why? Because this condition here will turn into false once again, and Prometheus will sort of auto-resolve this. Now, um, in order to make this shorter, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to... Oh, just let me show you. I told you that currently we are running only one instance, and that is it. You see it well? Okay, it says running. That's very cool. Now let's kill it. That's the one thing that you don't want to see on production, but it happens. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not actually going to kill it, I'm just going to say to Kubernetes, okay, I want to have zero replicas, which is basically downscaling it. Now, if you say, give me all deployments, you'll see that the service that was running has exactly zero available instances. And now you have a real issue because if you cannot see your instance, obviously your users cannot see it as well. Uh, so this is definitely something that you need to know about. And similar as before, what we're waiting for is to get another alert. And while we wait, uh, this one became green. I just wanted to show you, probably in Slack, if it was quick enough, it will get a green alert, meaning that it was auto-resolved. Probably needs a bit, little bit more time, so let's give it a chance and see if the other alert is already active. Any question? Anyone have any questions? Yeah. Not a real time system. Let's wait. Any questions? The, the service I'm sorry? How do you register the service? That's a good question. <laughs> now let me go a little back, back to. You can see from the status maybe. Uh, yeah. Um, it is a good question. Um, I want to show you this diagram that I said I don't want to spend much time on it, but. Um, so how this works is uh, basically you feed Prometheus server with tons of configuration. So if you have like static IPs for all your services, you can pull all those, uh, pull those uh, um, IPs in a single configuration. But those, that's not very scalable. I mean, especially if you're using Kubernetes, this doesn't work because uh, if you delete your service, if you redeploy it, it will switch IPs definitely. So what you want to do is, um, and what Prometheus does is it supports uh, service discovery. It doesn't have to be a Kubernetes service discovery. It can be other service discoveries. They are all supported. Most of them are supported. But how this works is that once you run Prometheus, it will go to the Kubernetes API and it will figure out all of the services. Well, all the ones that you need. I mean, uh, there's a few... I mean, if, if you are running, for example, in an isolated environment, you may restrict your server so that it only looks for certain services, like namespace-wise, you know. Um, but if, if you want to have a global configuration, it can scan all the namespaces, basically the entire cluster. It's up to how you want to manage it. 
but that's how it works. Maybe you show them the configuration, the target and the premises UI. Um, yeah, I'm going to get back to... The target <coughs> here, sorry. Or the target, maybe. Ah, I'm the sorry. Target, this is the configuration, yeah. It should be something here at some point in the... Well, yeah, this one is not very... It takes a little bit time to get used to it. But basically what, what Prometheus does is it creates a bunch of jobs. Like this one, for example, um, is uh, for C advisor, which is basically scanning the C groups of the Linux servers uh, underneath. Um, those are for the service endpoints. So basically here you, you specify what are the target you are, you want yeah. to come from. You can define the intervals, the grammar intervals, you can define the metric pass as well, so you can define multiple things. The easiest way would be like static IDs, as uh, Vlad mentioned, but the more scalable way is to do it using service as well. Yeah. Was there another question? Yeah. So, uh, if I get correctly, uh, your request to the Prometheus server, uh, HTTP post request. My request in... Isn't it, uh, when, when you're sending metrics over, it's a HTTP uh, request? It could be... It is basically premises who is getting the keywords. Like it's just like you provide the endpoint, and actually, can you put the... Well, here's what, what Prometheus... Down. Is it down? Oh, and yeah, I killed it. Down, yeah. Oh, there. So now I need an alert. Basically, <laughs> we'll show you, like, basically, the our service is basically spring boot. It looks like... Yeah, well, just wanted to show that this one service is already yeah. unavailable. So someone is getting an alert. So basically, your application will provide some endpoint called slash, in our case, it will be called slash actuator slash metrics, and you will have a text file, basically. It's the, he mentioned, like, scrub protocol, which is basically this format. And every time, I mean, let's say, it's scrubbing to var, your premises will get this endpoint, pull the whole request, and that's it. It's, it's a get, get request, basically. It's not most fast. It's query more than updating, so let's scale it. Up, then we can show you yeah, let's see if it's up. Still not ready. Okay. Waiting for it to so uh, come Your up. application is providing the, the, the endpoints and previously is just uh, call rest get to this service. That's it. Yeah, but as an answer to your question, it could be HTTP, but it could also be HTTPS. It very much yeah. depends on your configuration. And my question was also because from what I understand, most metric collection systems like just send out UDP packets instead of actually sending over HTTP because they don't mind losing the data. Yeah. So I was wondering why Prometheus does it. Well, de define losing the data. I mean, so like if so if um, I'm sending metrics um, to a certain server, yeah, right, and um, I send um, by like just raw UDP instead of actually sending proper HTTP packets, and it gets corrupted along the way or it gets dropped somewhere. Yeah. So that doesn't really matter because as you earlier mentioned that you just need a sample of whatever's going on. Well, why would you send the, a UDP package? I mean, the reason is if you have um, a really um, um, voluminous stream, uh, then it makes sense if you want to make it quicker, right? But in this case, um, well, how, at least how Prometheus works is it's, it basically scrapes every 30 seconds or one minute, depending on your configuration. So it's it's not in your interest to lose this, but if you lose it, it might mean that you actually lost the service. Uh, one thing here also, uh, when my premises pull the request, the data, it will pull all the requests, all the metrics. It doesn't pull one by one. Yeah. It's the whole things. In your case, basically, it's, for instance, tracing you use UDB because it's, it sent or to trace the stun information for every stun by itself. So that's why it used UDB packet because it's, uh, if you have like 1,000 stun, you will have 1,000 packet. But in Prometheus, it's just one resting void call and it will get all the metrics. It could be like 1,000 or something. This is how it looks like. It's yep. really assembled, it's like nothing really. This is exactly what Prometheus will say. This uh, is the endpoint that it will call by Prometheus to get every like 10 seconds. Also. Yeah. That's why it's uh, really <laughs> like, like uh, light, I would say, and it's not. Uh, well, it, it doesn't really. Uh, make much sense to send metrics one by one because you might lose them <laughs> one certain yeah, certain if amount if of them one by one, then UDB makes sense. But in yeah this case it's but it's such a small amount of information that um it doesn't really matter i mean by, the, look so of by it the way like sometimes like 
a Prometheus can fail scraping in some interval. If you say like every 10 seconds you are scraping this data, but if you like miss one interval, it's fine because in the next interval you will pull the, the accumulated values anyway. So it's, it's not a big deal even if, if you couldn't manage to get it in the correct times. It's not like you can tweak your interval to make it like real time, but it depends on your own experience. Actually, would it matter if, if you miss a certain scrape for a counter? Probably not because your counters are always increasing. So if you miss one scrape and get the other one, well, counter is still there. You might miss the value, but you still know what's, what's the rate with which uh, with, with it, with its, uh, the increasing rate of this counter. So for counters, it's not really a problem. For gauges, it could be a problem. If you miss a scrape, uh, for example, if, you have, if you're tracking the uh, CPU usage and you miss a scrape, uh, and this very time you might have missed a spike of uh, CPU usage. But is it that important? It very much depends on, on your system. So um, this is why most of the things that Prometheus do are configurable. So normally people do a 30 to 60 second scrape intervals, but you can get it as low as maybe five seconds or so. Uh, of course, the problem with that is that uh, this will put more pressure on your services. So you don't want to answer this much information every time unless you want it. If you don't need it, uh, the, the general rule is uh, get rid of all the data that you don't need. So metrics that you don't, don't use, get rid of them. Uh, amount of metrics that, that you're getting from, if you don't need them, you can get rid of them. Because as I said, if you have multiple services, it gets, you can get a tremendous amount of data. So for every service, you need to run some instance of like Prometheus to be able to get all these metrics? Uh, well, normally, uh, each service has to have an endpoint which returns something like this. Yeah, but like, let's say like JVM, GC, and maybe like, like general, like how you even get that like, without <laughs> implementing it? It depends on the tooling. So uh, if it's a JVM service, if it's a Java-based service, uh, there's a lot of tooling which allows you to expose those kind of metrics. If it's running on Go or Python, uh, there's other tools uh, to expose memory or whatever. There's no JVM there, so there's so no... It's not, it's not handled by, by Prometheus? No, no. There's also something called exporter, which is basically send your metrics about the host that where your application mm. is on. It's also in support of the exporter. What you return is basically a metric name, probably some labels, but you don't have to, and some value, which could be, which is always a number, so zero point whatever. That's all you have to return. Now, metric name is something that you predefine. Prometheus doesn't care what's the metric name. There are some conventions that you have to follow, or you are advised to follow, although you don't have to. Um, but this is the name that you put. You, it can be a temperature, right? It can be, I don't know, um, some counter, uh, could be anything. Uh, the thing is that after Prometheus scrapes all those metrics, uh, you can search through those, through those metrics the, way, the same way you search in a database. And that's what Prometheus is uh, at the end of the day. It's just a database uh, with a lot of capabilities for scraping, for uh, visualizing, things like that. Um, probably we can show how this looks in Grafana. Okay. Here. Yeah. This is basically the, <coughs> this is Grafana, this is where you put 10 functions. This is the name of the uh, matrix, and here you specify what kind of labels there is. Yeah, so if you want to add another metric, let's say, mm, let's say log back events total, you will see that, um, that uh, Grafana is actually kind enough to find those metrics for you. So it could be another, any metric, the way you predefine it, this is what it matters. What you can do is, you can say, okay, I want the log back events total. This is really good now. You can show them. Here, you see all the labels. Yeah. Some of the labels, actually, uh, 
some Let of the just... labels are already instrumented by micrometer this library, but uh, some are also instrumented by the heaps. So it doesn't have to enter add all the labels by yourself. Yeah. So what happens here is you get a lot of those metrics. Now the difference is that they have different labels. So this is actually a very strong point of using uh, Prometheus and the way it exposes data is that if you have multiple services exposing the same metric name, uh, the way to distinguish one from another is with labels. Because one might be coming from one server, the other might be coming from another server, um, and the third one might be coming even from another data center, who knows? It's up to you uh, to predefine those metrics so that you can read them later on. Prometheus doesn't care about this. It only cares that you provide it with the sufficient amount of information so that it, it can scrape those metrics. From this point on, it's up to your application to expose those metrics. And as I said, there's a lot of tooling to do this. Um, and after that, it's up to you to uh, create those beautiful graphics um, and uh, charts in Grafana. Grafana uh, also has the alerts. You can also build some basic alerting here as well. Yeah based on the queries, like the, uh, 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 basically the graph or the chart you build, you can also build a list to send like mail or Slack or whatever. Any other questions? No? Was it uh, useful? Yeah. Yeah. It was the best part for this project in particular, in my opinion, is that it's open source. So there's a lot of opportunities uh, for people to read the code and see how it works, uh, and also contribute even if they want to. Yeah, and it's easy to deploy even in your laptop, basically. It's not that the whole stack like Grafana yeah. premises can be done uh, just like based either using mini, mini cube or like for Kubernetes or like even Docker image. It will be like you can build it or see the whole demo in your laptop as well. Yep, well. No more questions. Uh, just want to take this opportunity and say if you're into that stuff, 